Alan Johnson, Sir Leaf, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Uh, it's been more than a year since you left office as president of Liberia. Uh, you came into power off the back of a peace deal that followed decades of war and violence and coups. Uh, you ended your mandate with Liberia's first successful democratic transition in 73 years. You're the first woman to lead an African nation, a Nobel Peace Prize winner. And yet some might say you've been more popular abroad than you have been at home. What do you say to them? Well, you know, I think if one really went around the country, where I spent a lot of time going into rural areas, uh, being able to work with farmers and rural women uh, and, and traders, and you know, I, I found that uh, I was very well connected with them. Uh, but also, if uh, in, in the city, some of the positions I took uh, were maybe not popular, uh, then that's fine. But I also know that I had to be out there in the global community being able to mobilize the support for Liberia, uh, being able to restore Liberia's credit worthiness, uh, uh, being able to make sure that the partnership that we needed okay. you know, was put in place to enable us to achieve our development goals. I'm very happy with what I was able to do. When you became president in 2005, you pledged a war on corruption. You called it, quote, a national cancer and, quote, public enemy number one. But then you yourself were hit with a variety of scandals, your government, and you later said you, quote, underestimated the cultural roots of corruption. But surely Liberian culture isn't to blame for corruption. Liberian politicians, such as yourself and others, are to blame for corruption. Well, well let me tell you, politicians are part of the culture. Politicians are part of the value system. But it sounds That's like you're blaming the public, it. the country, for the actions of politicians. I'm not blaming anybody. Uh, no, no, no. I'm thinking you, you, you're just talking what are listening. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying dependency, dishonesty came part of the Liberian culture over the many years of deprivation. The institutions to fight to, uh, uh, corruption were not there. You mentioned the institutions, and yet you did have an independent corruption watchdog, the General Auditing Commission, which found 20 government ministers accused 20 government ministers of corruption, and you failed to prosecute any of them. Why? Well, let me tell you something. All of those reports were sent to the, our Liberia Anti-Corruption uh, Agency. They were also sent to our legislature. We organized a particular unit in the presidency to be able to look at all of those cases and to be able to send them forward to the Ministry of Justice wherever they thought okay. prosecution was necessary. So why weren't they prosecuted? Well, let me say, let me, well, because our system is like that. If you have not, if you want to really understand Liberia, you need to dig a little bit deeper. You need to understand our culture, our values, our systems, and the way to tackle it is not always to just make a whole lot of noise about it, but to quietly build those institutions what is it? that are going to be okay. long lasting. What is it about your country's institutions and values and culture that led you to appoint three of your sons and your sister to top government positions? Something that led to your fellow Liberian Nobel Peace Laureate, uh, Leima Bowie, to resign from her post as head of Liberia's Peace and Reconciliation Commission. Does she not understand Liberian well, culture uh, or no, institutions? No, 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 no. no. Let's, let, no let's, let's put it this way. First of all, when I took office, uh, if you're talking about uh, one of my sons was always in place, in place a uh, couple of administrations before I took place and I didn't fire him, yes, I didn't think it was necessary to do so. Uh, if you're talking about the others where I needed a specialized skill to be able to achieve our objective of trying to mobilize the resources to tackle our major development uh, programs, that's what I did. And frankly, will you please look around today as some other countries that have found themselves perhaps in similar position and have been able to put in place those particular Which relatives countries? close to them Which who countries they, are those? they could trust. i uh, leave that to you to do your research. Well, on. I've done my research. Uh, the British Prime Minister hasn't appointed any but family then members. I, then the I, Canadian I, Prime Minister hasn't appointed any family members. The French President hasn't appointed any family members. The German Chancellor hasn't appointed any family members. I could well, keep good, going, good Ellen Johnson, them. Sally.
Good for them, is that all? <laughs> well, you were saying, them, look at other all? countries. I'm saying it's not a common practice um, for presidents or prime ministers, certainly not in democratic nations, to appoint a bunch of family members to run vis various institutions. Well, look, 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 let, let, let me put it this way. Uh, we're really going beyond this now. You know, let's, let's, let's deal with the real issues of Liberia. Uh, let's okay. deal with how let's, we can help this well, country I mean, to succeed. You say let's deal I mean, with Liberia's real issues. All, let's, let's no, no, no. You said you, said you, said you appointed all, all family this, members this for specialized <laughs> skill sets. Your son, Robert Sirleaf, was appointed chairman of Liberia's National Oil Company. That company went bankrupt and 30 to 40 million US dollars disappeared. What special skill set did he bring to let National me, Oil Company? Let me, no, 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 no. First of all, let me just say, what you just said is a blatant lie. L I E lie. You go look at the records. There is nothing about na uh, that company going bankrupt. So there were no problems at all so at National please, Oil Company. The National Oil Company ran into because the the two companies that were trying to exploit for oil, ExxonMobil and Chevron, could not find oil. They pulled out, and that meant that na that this company could not continue. It's as simple as that. And, and the record is clear. On how that. about the Liberia Central Bank? You appointed your son Charles Sirleaf as deputy governor there. Uh, you no, suspended no, no. him. I, I, you suspended uh, him for failing oh, to declare on, his assets. And two months ago, he was ordered to be held in jail while awaiting trial for having unlawfully printed local currency worth tens of millions of US dollars. Did you know he was doing that? Well, I didn't know you wanted to have an interview just to come out with outrageous statements. I mean, if is that it, was I'm, I'm confused. Uh, was he, should, he not? He never, no, uh, no, is no. It he never, uh, I thought he was. Really, has he not I been really held really in jail? Thought, I, I, is that wrong? Is he, has he not been held in jail? That is not true. That is not true. That is not true. They, it, he, was he was unjustifiably, illegally charged. But anyway, so he was no, charged. I mean, that's your opinion. Subject, you're his mother. Obviously, you're not going to agree with the charges. Subject, I'm just asking you to comment on him being held for trial. You're saying that didn't happen. Please. No, you're not. No, no. What you're trying to do, what you're trying to do is to is showmanship now. That's what you're trying to do. We do need that. We need to have a civil exchange. I'm, I'm very civil. A I civil asked a very simple question. You, you accuse me of and, making and up things. Me... I haven't accused you of anything. I simply asked your son I... has been ordered to be I'm held just... in jail while awaiting trial for having unlawfully printed local currency worth tens of millions of dollars. What's your reaction to that? There's nothing uncivil about that question. Uh, look, our system requires that when we have a when we have a case under the jurisdiction of the court, we're not supposed to talk about it until that matter is settled by the courts. So you're trying to make me do things that are not right and not legal. Please don't do that. Okay, how about what happened on your watch? You suspended him for de failing to declare his assets. Am I lying about that as well? Oh, I did what I felt I had to do. You, you have to realize how I, how I ran how I ran uh, that's what the we, government in That's what we country. tried to work out here. That's I what our viewers want to know. How did you run the government? You appointed family members, suspended some of them. Just wondering how that works. Oh, well, I don't think you want a conversation. I do. I, I, I don't think, I don't think you, you want a conversation because I'm asking questions that are very legitimate questions. I would ask any former president on this show about corruption allegations on their watch. The fact that they happen to be your children is neither here nor there. You're right. So you don't want to comment on anything about corruption. OK, um, one of the other things critics line up against you for, you're criticized is for your former support of Charles Taylor, your predecessor, who is, of course, a convicted war criminal. In 2009, you formally apologized for having stood behind him. That same year, the Liberian Truth and Reconciliation Commission made a set of recommendations saying that a compensation scheme should be created, a dedicated war crimes court should be set up. You never took action on those things. Why not? We have moved beyond the Charles Taylor story. We have moved beyond all of those bad things that characterize our country. Liberia needs peace. Liberia needs civility. Liberia needs to claim a future that's devoid of all of those things that have kept us down, that have divided us, that has created problems for us. Will Isn't that what truth and reconciliation is for, to get past division? Please, 
truth and reconciliation has been gone to the courts, it's left the courts, it has transformed into a palaver hut. That process has started, the process of contrition and forgiveness. All of that has started, and so I don't but care But you ignored the actual say. Commission on Truth and Reconciliation, which also accused you of financing and forming, quote, the warring factions in Liberia's civil wars. The report said that people, including yourself, should be banned from occupying public office for 30 years. Really? But then maybe you're not up to date on what's happening in our country. Maybe you forget that after that came out, I won two elections. Because you ignored that the that recommendation that said you shouldn't and, be allowed to run no, for no, office. No, 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 no. That went to court. You see, you don't have enough information for the things you say. Okay. That's really unfortunate. Okay. This matter went to the courts. I didn't put it there. It went up to our Supreme Court. And a decision was taken. You cannot, this body did not have the legal powers to be able to judge people without giving them right of self-defense. Wasn't my case, it was somebody else's case. If you just take a little bit of time to understand the truth and the facts, then you won't have to say some of the things you say. Okay. It's not true then that the recommendation was for people not to run for office for 30 years. I just made that up. Uh, well, okay. Well, again, again, you totally missed the point. Okay. We'll have to agree and disagree what the report says. People can look it up. One last question. Uh, you're one of the few African leaders to have led a peaceful democratic transition. When you look at the state of democracy in some other African nations and see how so many others, Libya, Zimbabwe, others, have failed to do the same, have, have had repeatedly contested elections, what's your advice to those other African countries, those other African leaders? I think Africa is on the right track. When it comes to democracy, I think what we need is to make stronger institutions that will ensure that democracy is implemented, will ensure that participation of all citizens in societies are enhanced through their active, active collaboration to be able to achieve development goals. There may be a, be a lot of uh, those that uh, take away from the successes we've had, from the progress we have, but I think the record is clear. The evidence is right there to see. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, thank you so much for joining me on Upfront. I'm not sure if I thank you, but let's say I'm glad it's over. <laughs>